Suppose we have a very tiny bulb like an LED, which requires say about 2 volts to turn it on. And let's say that if you put any voltage across it more than 2 volts, then you're going to blow it up. Maybe 3 or 4 volts, the LED gets blown up, gone. And let's say that to power this up, we use a power supply, which is not a very reliable power supply. <laughs> let's say it produces a voltage, it gives out a voltage anywhere between 1 volt to 5 volt, let's say. How do we connect this LED to this power supply and make sure that it doesn't blow up? One way to do this is by using a Zener diode. In a previous video, we've spoken about this thing called the Zener diode. We saw that it was a very heavily doped diode and due to which, in the reverse bias, it can break down at much lower voltages. It can start conducting very heavily at much lower voltages than a conventional diode. And we've also seen that the more you dope it, the more the doping impurities, uh, lower will be its, uh, its breakdown voltage, all right? And this mechanism is called the Zener mechanism. It's a little different than what happens in regular diodes. And we've spoken a lot about this in a previous video. So if you need more clarity, it would be a great idea to go back, watch that video, and then come back over here. But in short, Zener diodes can break down at very low voltages under reverse bias, okay? So let's say we have a Zener diode with us, uh, normal diodes are represented this way in a circuit symbol, right? Uh, how do we represent the Zener diode? Well, all we do is put a Z over here to tell us that this is not a normal diode, this is a very heavily doped Zener diode. Okay, we mentioned like this. Now, suppose we have a Zener diode whose reverse breakdown, the Zener breakdown voltage, let's say is two volts. That's what we'll be requiring for our purpose. Let's say we have a breakdown voltage of exactly two volts. Then let's see how this diode behaves under various circumstances. So first of all, to make sure it is in reverse bias, we have to make sure this is positive and this is negative, right? We should try and uh, force the current in the opposite direction. Now notice, as long as the reverse bias is less than two volts, when we are over here, less than two volts, notice that the current flowing through the diode is extremely tiny, over here we are, which means it's almost as if the diode doesn't conduct at all. So we could assume this diode acts like an open circuit when the voltage across that is less than two volts, all right? So that's one way to think about our diode. So uh, that's one behavior. It'll act like an open circuit, like an open circuit when the voltage across it, the voltage, this voltage, is less than two volts. And similarly, once you hit two volts, notice what happens. Once you hit two volts, then regardless of what current flows through it, notice uh, this becomes almost vertical. So regardless of what current flows through it, the voltage pretty much remains a constant, right? And a heavy current starts flowing through it, which means we can assume that once the voltage hits two volts, so let's say, let's use purple for this. Once the voltage hits two volts, we can pretty much assume that our Zener diode behaves like a short circuit because it offers extremely low resistance. You see, it allows readily allows the flow of charges. So we could assume it acts like a short circuit between two points, between two points, and the voltage across it remains a constant. That's important. The voltage doesn't change. The voltage across it just gets fixed at two volts. So this is the VI characteristics of the Zener diode, and this is how we can interpret that characteristics. And now using this, let's see how we can attach our LED to that power supply. So here's our LED, its voltage shouldn't exceed two volts, a tiny bulb you can imagine, and here's our supply which can supply anything between one volt to five volt, and we have to connect this to the LED, we don't have anything else and we need to power it up. So if we directly connect the wires from the LED directly to the supply like this, then there's a chance that our LED can blow up because the voltage can exceed two volts. How do we make sure the voltage over here never exceeds two volt? How do we do that? Well, can you see that we can use a Zener diode over here? Because the voltage across the Zener diode under reverse bias, remember, under reverse bias, can never exceed two volts. So let's bring a Zener diode over there. Let's bring a Zener diode over here. And we can attach it across the LED, right? To make sure that the voltage across LED doesn't exceed two volt. Now, I want you to think for a while. And uh, uh, I want you to pause the video and think for a while, what direction, how should I connect this, uh, this Zener diode? Do you think I should connect the Zener diode this way? Like this? Or do you think I should connect it this way? I want you to pause the video and think about this for a while.
All right, let's see. If you attach it this way, then you're attach putting a positive over here and negative over here, pushing the current downwards. Hey, that means you're forward biasing your Zener diode. Don't do that because we don't want our Zener diode in the forward bias. Its speciality lies in the reverse bias. It's in the reverse bias that the voltage will not exceed two volts, right? So let's flip the diode. This is not how we should connect it. We should connect it this way. Ta-da! And there we have it. There we have it. Now we know for sure that the voltage across this diode is not going to exceed two volts. So yay, done, right? Well, not really. I want you to now think about what will happen under various circumstances. I want you to just pause the video and again, think about this, this is very interesting. What will happen if the supply voltage is less than two volts? Pause and think. And similarly, what will happen when the supply voltage hits two volts? Think about these two cases. We have the behavior over here. All right, let's see. If the supply voltage is less than two volts, right, then we are over here. We are over here, which means our Zener diode acts like a an open circuit, right? So let's let's do that. Let's put that. So if it's less than two volts, then our Zener diode acts like an open circuit. In such a case, the current directly will flow this way through the LED, powering up the LED. Nicely, our LED will glow as long as the voltage is less than two volts. Excellent. Excellent. Now, if the voltage exceeds two volts, or let's say the voltage equals two volts, supply voltage becomes two volts, then our Zener diode acts like a short circuit, like this, and therefore now it'll be in this part of the graph. We are now over here, and so from now onwards, the voltage across the Zener diode will be remaining constant as two volts, and so this LED will have a constant voltage of two volts. Yay, problem solved, right? No, it's not solved, because in this case, when the voltage is about two volts, we are short circuiting our entire circuit, which means an extremely heavy current starts flowing over here. I don't know what will happen to Zener diode, but our battery will blow up. <laughs> so we have avoided our LED from blowing up, sure, but this is bad for our supply. You should never ever short circuit uh, any power supply. A very strong current like that can blow up this battery. So this is, the right mode, I mean, we have the right circuit, but we need to just improve it and make sure it doesn't undergo short circuit. What do you think we should do? Again, I want you to pause the video one last time and think about this. All right, just to make sure that it doesn't undergo a short circuit, what we can do is a, put a resistance over here, right? We can apply a resistance in our circuit, an extra resistance, like this. We usually call that resistance as RS, saying that it's a, in series with this circuit. Right? We just put a uh, series resistance over here and our problem is now solved. Again, when the voltage is less than two volts, this will act like an open circuit and only the current flows this way. So again, let me do that. As long as the voltage is less than two volts, it'll act like an open circuit, current will flow this way. If the voltage equals two volts now, then this will act like a short circuit and the current will start flowing this way. And now guess what? Even if the voltage exceeds two volts, the voltage over here will always remain two volts. So let me just write that down. That voltage across this Zener diode, this is positive, this is negative. This voltage across the diode can never exceed two volts. This will be only two volts because we've seen over here. Now, of course, in reality, this is not ex exactly vertical. Uh, so the voltage will exceed a little bit. All right, as the current changes. But we'll assume that pretty much doesn't change at all. And as a result, if the power supply supplies say three volts, then that extra one volt will be dropped across this resistor, two volts get dropped over here. If the uh, supply voltage becomes four volts, there will be two volts here and two volts over here. So notice whatever happens, as long as the voltage supplied by the power supply is more than two volts, the voltage across the LED will stay at two volts because of this Zener mechanism. You understand? And that's the whole idea behind voltage regulation. So this, this circuit is called as a voltage, or this Zener diode is called as a voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. And that's one of the applications of a Zener diode. Voltage regulator just means that it keeps a constant voltage across it. It makes sure that the voltage doesn't exceed a particular value. Well, of course, if the input voltage goes below 
below two volts, then the zener will act like a open circuit, and uh, uh, you know the voltage across the LED will also go below two volts. That it can't do, but it can make sure that the voltage cannot won't exceed two volts. That's the idea behind a regulator or a voltage regulator. So long story short, a zener diode in reverse bias has a constant voltage, and as a result, it can be used as a voltage regulator.